Hi and welcome to this tutorial. If you have been following along the previous tutorials, you now know how to specify bean definitions in the spring.xml. And we also know how we can reference beans as properties of other beans by using the property tag and using the ref element of the tag. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about a few points relating to bean names. And uh, this is something that you might encounter in real world applications and it's a handy thing to know. First thing I'm going to talk about is inner beans. Uh, I'll take this example that uh, we used in our previous tutorial. What I did was I defined a triangle object. And in my triangle object, I had three point objects. The point objects are coordinates for the triangle. So a triangle has three different coordinates. Now I defined the three point objects as separate bean definition. So I had a bean ID zero point, which was the coordinate zero, zero. I had a point two and a point three object, which was uh, different values. Now, here's the thing. Now, zero point is a common point that might be accessed across different objects in my drawing application. But the other points that I see here have specific values that do not really have any meaning. And uh, let's say I know for a fact that I wouldn't be using point two object or point three object anywhere else. And this would be used only for the triangle then what I can do is I do not need to specify these bean definitions separately and give it a name. Instead, what I can do is I can define something called as an inner bean. So the whole concept of the inner bean is that I remove this definition and I put it inside the definition of the triangle. Since we know that this is not going to be used anywhere else, I can completely consolidate and put all the required information inside this triangle bean itself. And then only when I have a particular value that I know might be accessed by a different shape, only then I will use a separate bean definition. So in this case, a zero point is a common point that is used by many shapes. So what I'll do is I'll keep this as a separate external bean with an ID, but these two beans have specific values that pertain only to this triangle. So I'm, not, I'm gonna move this definition inside the triangle definition itself. So in order to specify the inner bean, what we need to do is in this uh, property tag, I'm gonna remove this ref. Of course, I'm gonna leave the zero point as it is. I'm gonna change for point B and point C. So in this property tag, I will remove the reference here because there's not gonna be an external bean. And uh, I will close the tag. over here and inside this property tag, I can have this bean definition. So I'll just cut this and paste it here. Okay, so inside the point B property, I'm defining a bean. So this is an inner bean. Now the advantage of the inner bean is that you have uh, isolated the bean only where it's required. Since this bean is required only inside the triangle, it does not come up as a separate bean. And then the second thing is you do not need to specify an ID for this one because an ID is required only when you're referencing the bean from somewhere else, either by using a REF like here, where you have to give the ID or by using the get bean where you have to give the ID again. So if you're not doing any of those, then you can actually do away with the ID. So here what's happening is since the bean is inside the property tag, it knows that this bean has to be assigned to this property. And since this bean is an inner bean, it's not going to be referenced anywhere else. So there's really no point in giving uh, an ID tag here. So we can do away with the ID tag. And then uh, the properties will remain the same. I will have to set these two values. And then uh, the bean that gets created here, first of all, gets assigned to this property of the triangle object. And secondly, since it's an inner bean, it does not have a separate ID as such, and it's not accessible by other objects. It is specifically only for the triangle object. Similarly, let's do the same thing for point C. So I will add another closing tag and I will move the point three definition over here. OK, 
Okay, and I'll save this. So this triangle object has two points that are specific only for the triangle. The other point it's actually using is the, the zero point, which is common and it can be used by other objects as well. So let's test and make sure that it's working fine. Yes, it is. So all the three points have been populated and uh, two of the points are being populated by using inner beans. Now again, there's no really significant performance or any other advantage by using uh, inner beans. The only thing that we're gaining here is that you consolidate all the required uh, values, configuration values inside a single bean definition. And if it's not needed anywhere else, it's always better to specify the definition inside the bean where it's actually needed. You don't need to specify the ID for the inner bean. Of course, you can have uh, an ID as I've demonstrated by forgetting to remove this, but uh, there's really no point in having an ID because you cannot really refer it anywhere else. So it is not required. Okay, so now that we've seen the inner bean, we look at one other, uh, one other naming facility that Spring provides and it's called aliases. So alias is a way in which we can give different names to the same bean. And uh, the reason why you'd want to do it is, uh, you know, it's actually dependent on your coding practice, dependent on conventions, but there are different uh, names that you can give for the same bean. And then you can reference using aliases anywhere in your uh, Spring application. So the way to give aliases is by using an alias tag. It's easy. It shows up over here. So the alias tag has this very simple signature. You need to give a name and you need to give an alias. So the name is something that you've already defined. Let's say, for example, I take this triangle bean. So I paste this here, okay? And I call this triangle alias. So what I'm doing is I'm giving a different name to the triangle bean, and then I can use this alias anywhere in my application. I can use this as a ref for some other bean, or I can use this to do a get bean. So I can use a triangle alias and still execute this. It's still gonna recreate the same triangle. That's because as per spring, this name also refers to this bean. So you can give as many aliases as you want, and then you can refer using aliases. You can also give alias in the bean definition itself. So say for example, I can give a name property here, triangle name. So this is again going to be another reference to the same bean. So you can have as many names as we want for beans. You can have the ID, you can have the name, and you can have aliases, as many aliases as you want. But then uh, a good practice is to use IDs because you can uh, have XML validation. You can have only one uh, particular ID in all the beans. So you can, if you define another bean with the ID as triangle, uh, the XML validator can catch the error. So uh, it's better to use IDs in order to reference beans. And you wanna use uh, a different name for a particular purpose, you would use aliases. Okay, one final thing before we wind up. Uh, we have all these names and aliases and a whole lot of uh, different strings in which we can refer to one bean. If you want to somehow restrict this and you want to validate this, say for this ref tag, uh, this ref tag can uh, point to a name, it can point to a bean ID, it can point to an alias. So if you want to restrict it to only IDs, you have something called as an ID ref. And this will have to be nested inside the property tag. So I open the property tag and uh, instead of a ref, I add an ID ref. Now what the ID ref does is it makes sure that there is a bean with the ID zero point in spring.xml. If it's not there, it's gonna throw an exception. So this is one way you can actually have uh, a foolproof reference and you make sure that the reference is already there. And uh, this, is, this is kind of an extra validation that you can have for your uh, spring XML.